Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for my 1000 subscriber giveaway Q&A video. Following on from the winner announcement for my 1000 subscriber giveaway video, I've rounded up the questions that you left on the 1000 subscriber announcement video and a few of the comments as well so um and yeah we're gonna have a gonna have a little bit of fun with going through these and i will uh, try my best to answer them it's been a busy day today i've had some time so i've been uh, i've been catching up on some ideas at, for filming stuff for the channel so this is actually the fourth video i've shot today so i've um, got lots of stuff ready to uh to share with you guys next week so it's the end of the day I've, uh, I've got my nightcap and I'm going to have a go at these questions for you. So anyway, let me start by first thanking each and every one of you uh, for all the kind comments, uh, words of encouragement that you left on the 1000 subscriber giveaway video. I do very much appreciate those. I do read all the comments as well. I try to respond to them as well, um, although it's getting busier and busier with uh, more and more subscribers. Anyway, I don't plan to stop responding to each of your comments. As well as answering the questions, I thought one thing that I like, one thing that I found really useful about uh, the 1000 subs feedback was kind of like picking up on what your perceptions are of a channel. And I've just kind of distilled these down to what you see me as doing on channel leakages. And this kind of like helps me, me sort of think about future direction and, uh, and content. Firstly, right, so you like the resin kit unboxing and rules reviews I do, like model building and tips and conversions, uh, the attention to detail that I put into those videos as well. So, uh, you know, that's, that's good. You say that I have a balanced and honest opinion and give good insights. Well, uh, yeah, I try to, I try to be as impartial as I can be. A couple of you said I do professional quality videos. Well, uh, that made me laugh. Uh, that's, <laughs> I don't know if I'm professional quality, but thank you very much all the same. Yeah, I do try to produce good stuff. And I mean, yeah, I do this as an amateur. I don't have any particularly sophisticated tools, but at the same time, uh, I want to produce stuff that I'm proud of and think that you'll enjoy. Another theme you picked out is you like the dedicated 30K discussion. Indeed, and that's very much my primary focus here. Something a bit new to the channel, but a lot has generated lots of interest, is people saying that you really enjoyed the What Made 40K video looking at June. That's quite taken me by surprise. The What Made 40K June videos had a huge amount of interest, generated a lot of views for the channel. So um, yeah, that's been fantastic. I was quite proud of that video. It took a had to put quite had to put a lot of work into that. It took probably ten times longer per minute filmed. Than one of my regular videos so it did take a lot of time to do but i'm really pleased that so many of you have enjoyed that so yeah starship troopers is next so let's get into the questions and in no particular order or preference firstly we have vaughn schmidt and vaughn asks what is your favorite primark legion weapon etc and what would you want to return from a Horus Heresy to modern warhammer 40,000? Uh, gosh right that's quite a lot well I i'm i'm gonna answer the question about my favourite weapon, because it answers both in a way. One of my favourite weapons in the 30k universe is the Volkai device, so the Martian heat ray beam type weapon. And Volkites were, in, were in, in a way kind of defined 30k because they were created specifically for the 30k environment. Before 30k came in the Horus Heresy, there was no such thing as a Volkite weapon, so it's an entirely new weapon. So it's for me, it's kind of synonymous with the 30k setting. So yes, I really like Volkites, and when I originally put my Iron Hand Legion together, I actually jokingly did so in a way that I had more Volkite guns and bolters. It's changed since, but yeah, I like Volkites. And sticking with the theme of Volkites, well, what unit would I like to take from a heresy to modern Warhammer 40,000 that would have to be the Glaive super heavy special weapons tank which mounts the ultimate Volkite weapon the Volkite Carronade you know just because you could be so nasty to Tau, Tyranids, Orcs, Guardsmen it will be completely unfair but hilarious. Thanks for that question Vaughan. The next question is from Mr. Halone. You are making my resin addiction worse thanks for that your June video was awesome. More please. Yeah, sorry about the resin addiction, mate. I, I do know a good recovery group. I'm glad you liked the June video. Thank you very much for that. And uh, I am working on more with that series. Once I get this first series out of the way, which is three episodes, which is June, Starship Troopers, and HP Lovecraft. I've had so much feedback about the whole concept. Uh, I've got already got more than enough ideas to do a second series. So yes, 
It's going to take a while because those videos take a lot of work, but I will continue that. Yeah, cheers for that, Mr. Hlone. The next question comes from Cole Scott. Cole says, thanks for the answer to my question about the HP Lovecraft. You're welcome, and I do try to respond to as many of the questions that you leave as I can, and I, I enjoy the, the discussion with you guys in the videos, and that's part of why I do this. So yeah, you're welcome, Cole. And then you pose a question. Now, this is a really good question. Now, in the pantheon of the Chaos Gods, which one would you follow? Ooh, gosh. Well, I don't, I'm not, I don't think I'm a Nurgle follower. No, not a Nurgle follower. I have more showers than Nurgle followers are allowed to have, so I can't be a Nurgle follower. I'm not a follower of Corn. I don't think. I don't like smashing stuff up and killing stuff in a wanton fashion enough for Corn. So that leaves Slanesh and Zinj. Hmm, Slanesh or Zinj? I mean, I think I'll just put a little um, caveat in here. Don't forget, Slanesh is not all about perversion. People can worship Slanesh because of their pursuit of perfection. So I guess I try to pursue, when I make my resin models, I, I, I put a lot of focus into that. So does that make me a Slaneshi follower? Likewise, um, I like really detailed, complex uh, rule sets, the sort of stuff that Zinj would definitely have under the just as planned category. So. Hmm, now perhaps, actually I'm going to cheat on this one, I'm going to put a question back to you guys. Which do you think I am? Am I a Slaneshi resin worshipper, or am I a Zinchian rules manipulator? I don't know, let me know. Uh, the next question comes from Reliquay. Uh, keep up the good work. Could focus more on the Mechanicum, not that I'm a Scurria fanatic. Uh, winky smiley face. Well, fair enough, uh, Reliquay. Really, really yeah, I mean, I do a fair amount of Mechanicum content. I've not yet showcased my Mechanicum army, although I have looked at various little bits of it, but that's something that's actually not far off doing. I need to put together my Arch Magos model. Yeah, so keep an eye out for future Mechanicum content. Yeah, and uh, d go easy on Scurria. It's, uh, you don't want to upset your opponents too much. But yeah, thanks for that, really, really quick. This comment comes from Exotic Gaming. Hi. Hi, Exotic Gaming. The next question is from a fellow YouTube creator, and uh, this person has perhaps too many vowels in their tag handle, and it, the absence of space just leaves it open to interpretation how to pronounce it. However, I'm going to go with Cruror Angelus Cilicius, and I'm presuming that is a correct pronunciation given this YouTube as well documented ponchon for the Blood Angels chapter. Um, you should check out his channel. He's got loads of great 40K, 30K, and general wider games content on it, so yeah. Anyway, and the question is, congratulations on the subs. Apart from leaky cheese, what's your favorite cheese? Hmm, well you're right, I do like leaky cheese, and Mrs. Leaky Cheese makes a very nice leaky cheese that all the leaky cheesers like to eat. But aside from leaky cheese, what's my favorite cheese? Um, cheddar? Well, no, I think cheddar's a little bit tame, and we need something a bit more edgy, a bit stronger for the Leaky Cheese channel. I keep asking at the Waitrose Delicatessen counter if they have any uh, Kasu Mazu in, but they just stare at me blankly, so I've not been able to try that yet. Hmm, favourite cheese. Well, I'm going to give you, actually, a bit of a novelty cheese, and I like this cheese because it's... I don't often see it. There's a cheese called Appledore, and Appledore is a Wensleydale cheese with some apple added, and the entire cheese has been dusted in cinnamon. So it's delicious. So there you go, Appledore cheese. If you ever get a chance to try it, I'd recommend it. Uh, thank you very much for that question, um, Cruror Angelus Cilicius. The next question or observation, perhaps, is a shared user one, and Adam Wright, Philip von Leipzig, VJ Morph, Nitro Panda, Connor Cragen, The Johnsonator, Rotten Flieger, and Coran Quain and Kadars all observe the following. Weren't we at like 500 two months ago? Well done. Well, it was actually less than two months ago. It was actually, it only took a month to go from 500 to 1,000. Yeah, it did happen very quickly. But yeah, thank you very much, guys. And thank you to everybody who's uh, congratulated me on 1,000 subs. The next question comes from J. Rob Matos. So, what are your thoughts on the new rules? So I'm presuming we are talking about 8th edition here. What do I think about 8th edition? Well, I like the sound of what they posted on the Warhammer community website, which I did a video about. 
And I like the sound of it because they sound like they're going back to some of their roots with the rules. So stuff that I think the general consensus seems to be it's second edition based, but you know, it's, there's not a huge difference between it and first. And I like the feel of that. I don't think they're going to go crazy Age of Sigma with it, and I certainly hope they don't. And I, I think that Forge or they're going to eke out their own corner of the rule set to keep the heresy on track as it is. But I mean, yeah, those those six proposed rules, I think they all sound good. There's some significant balance questions to address, particularly on the save modifier front, so I'll have to see how they play those out. Let's see what happens with 8th. Thanks for that, uh, J. Rob Matos. The next question comes from Steve Jackson. The only questions I have is where can I get my hands on an Adeptus Custodes Codex? GW has a link to the Codex on Black Library, but the page is down. Does this mean the only way I can get the Codex is through the Talons of the Empress set? I did a little bit of research around this, and I believe, yes, your proposition is correct. You can only get it at the moment through the Talons of the Empress set. The information that went upon the Black Library page, or Warhammer Digital, was actually a mistake, and it got rapidly taken down, and you can't find it now. So uh, at the moment, yep, you've got to buy that box set. Thank you for that question, Steve. Uh, the next question is, oh, hello, it's Exotic Gaming again. Uh, so in block capitals or caps lock, I like that you really engage. Well, yes, thank you, Exotic Gaming. I tried to answer my questions, and by the way, you still only got one entry into the 1,000 subscriber draw. Moving on to Andrew Riley. Congrats on 1,000 subs. Thank you very much, Andrew. What is your favourite armour mark? Whoa. Now this is a difficult question. I mean, I'm a big fan of Space Marine armour marks, particularly the pre 41st millennial type so marks two three four five and six which is my favorite armor mark this question is a bit like asking me to pick a favorite child you can't really do it because everyone's got for me anyway everyone's got something unique and good about it but if i kind of like was to do a first among equals type answer it would have to be mark six and that's just, just because it, it it goes back to the very origin of the game and yeah i, I it, for me, there's a big nostalgia hit on it, yeah, so I think Mark VI, but only by a nose. <laughs> nice little pun there. Thanks, Andrew. The next question comes from Guy Incognito. Your reviews of the Horus Heresy books convinced me to get them all. Admit it, you're sponsored by Forge World. Yeah. No, I am not sponsored by Forge World. I don't actually think Forge World would touch me with a barge pole to trust them to review anything. Um, yeah, I think I'm far too controversial and independently minded for them. I'm completely independent. I don't make any money off this channel at all. I don't use adverts, anything like that. I do it because I enjoy doing it. Maybe I'll... I'm toying with the idea of Patreon. I'm still toying with it, so I'm trying to work out how to make it work best for me and for you guys. But no, I'm independent and in the unlikely event I ever get any sort of linking with anything or anyone, there will be a disclosure on any video like that, so you'll know. I'm glad that you enjoyed the reviews of the Horus Heresy book, Guy, so thank you very much. Next question, well, I'm not sure if this is a question, an observation, or a request. And Omnipotent Peaceman says, in block capitals, I like big butts, dot 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 question mark. Well, uh, I'm sure you do, Omnipotent Peaceman, but it's a big if that you've got to watch out for. That's what will get you in trouble. The next question comes from Paul Lissamore. Loving the content, you're welcome. Never bought a Forge World item yet, but will soon, and a little worried about working with resin. Any advice to a newbie? So, um, I've, re I've replied to you separately, Paul, and I linked you to, through to a series of videos I did where I prepared a Rhino Demos pattern kit from all the, doing all the different steps and all the different stages of putting it together. Uh, so I hope you found that useful. The only thing I've still not yet done is really talk about the tools that I use for working with resin. So maybe that's a video I might uh, look to do fairly soon. There's loads of tools around and you can spend a lot of money on tools. However, with a little bit of... You can also get really effective tools without spending huge amounts of money. So I think if I do a video on that, that's what I'll try address. But yeah, cheers for that, Paul. John Holland asks, congrats on 1K. Cheers, John. More modeling vids, especially the time lapses. Well, I'm glad you like the time lapses. 
I do them from time to time. They don't work for every kit I do and they take quite a lot of setup and quite often prep to do, but I do do them when I see the opportunity and I do like that you've enjoyed the ones I've done so far. John also asks, what glues do you use for the various four draw kits? I use two types of super glue, pop this on camera. The first one I use is what they is a medium thin cyano super glue and this one's by Zap. Uh, zapper gap they call it and the reason I use this I mean you can get there's I don't think I don't know if there's anything specifically special about this glue uh, the reason I use this brand is I like the bottle design and you it comes with a separate cap and you can buy replacement nozzles so given it's a big pot of glue that helps you get the most out of the glue so I I use this you know medium super glue and I use this brand because I like the bottle design uh, I also then use a high viscosity super glue. I'll just show you this quickly. And that's from a mitre bond kit. And for high viscosity super glue, I would advise buy a mitre bond kit, get yourself a can of accelerant as well. And it's cheap and you get loads of glue. I mean, to be honest, I've given quite a lot away to friends because I just can't get through it all. Or for very high strength joints, so particularly if we're looking at some of the larger walkers that Forge World make, I'll use a two-part epoxy. And so here we have, this is the Rapid Setting Araldite. There's lots of different brands. I just use this because uh, it's easy to mix with the amount that you want and it's actually pretty cheap. But there's loads of brands and they all do a similar sort of thing. So I've got one fast setting version, which I use for kind of general applications like that. And then I've also got some Ultra Strong, which takes about a day to cure but I use that for when I'm doing tight and grade joints. So for example, when I when I stuck together hips and the ankle joints on my wall or tighten, I used um, 24 hour epoxy because once that's set, I never want it to budge. So yeah, those are the main adhesives I use. Yeah, so I hope that's helpful, John. The next observation, and oh gosh, it's exotic gaming. And it says, uh, and this time, I think this is a third comment, uh, I wanna live, well, don't we all? So yeah, anyway, good luck with that, mate. The next question comes from ShadowFox178. I like this channel to see resin kits and learn simple things like how you need to clean off resin release agent. As prior, I had no idea about that whatsoever. Also, thanks for replying to comments. That's a big thing in itself. Well, yes, you're most welcome, ShadowFox. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you found the demo videos handy. Now you're welcome for the comment replies. I, I do try to get to all those. Uh, the next question comes from longtime subscriber Nat Wainwright, and Nat says, "Keep doing what you're doing. I will do, mate." Have you given any more thought to funding? Yes, I have. I have. I've got an ideas list at the moment for Patreon funding and how I'm going to structure that. I'm still kind of toying with a couple of ways to do it, and I don't know. I might do a video putting a couple of suggestions out to you guys to see what you think. I want it to be a good idea and. If I'm going to do that, I want it to give something back to you guys. That's the important thing for me. It's not just about asking for money from you guys. It's about giving something back to you as well. It all has to do with adding something to the channel. Uh, and then that also says, also, have you managed to pre-order Shadow Walls? No, I missed that one, unfortunately. I'll have to keep an eye out for that because I'm quite intrigued by Shadow Walls because I played Confrontation back in the White Dwarf Age and then I was into Necromunda in a big way, Ghost Scavies and it's quite it's really cool to see this game appear again and you know and even i played what was actually the very genesis of the game which was a game book by i think it was brian ansell called Laserburn. i'm interested by that and i don't know I'll, maybe i'll uh, get myself a copy if i can find one at a good price yep. cheers for that night and the next question comes from weaboo matt i want to say that you've worked really hard producing so many high quality videos thank you very much matt and you're welcome I like your channel because you keep us updated on new model releases and go over their rules. My question is, how did you come up with your username? Ah, the origin of the leaky cheese. Hmm, thought about this and an episode of an anime series called Cowboy Bebop and you may well know about this if you've got any interest in anime at all, so it's very well known. And there's one episode of that called Heavy Metal Queen and in this episode, the the main character outside of the regular characters, uh, which is called um, VT, I think that was her name. She has this kind of long-term thing going where people are trying to guess her name, you know, what what's VT mean? So perhaps, I don't want to tell you what the origin of League Cheese is yet, but perhaps if 
someone might be able to guess it and perhaps someone can come up with some funny ideas as to what the origin of leaky cheese is. I'm going to say no more than that but by all means have a guess. Anyway, and then Matt also finishes by saying also I'm going to predict if all goes well that you will hit 5,000 subscribers in less than two months. Wow. Well that's uh, that's very flattering Matt and uh, let's see how we go. You called the US presidential co election result correctly so uh, I'm encouraged by that. Thank you Matt. Moving on to the next question from Rob McCord. Way to go, Elsie. Cheers, Rob. Looking forward to seeing your Mechanicum army painted, or any of your four jeweled kits for that matter. Seriously. Yeah, I know, you want to see some stuff painted. I'll get there eventually, guys. Don't worry. Moving on to the next question from Manta D3. I love the reviews of products that you do on the channel, some of the most exclusive on YouTube, uh, e.g. Gideon Law. By the way, if I'm one of the 24 going to Mars, will you ship it? Uh, I think this is in reference to the prize material. Manta D3, if you're one of the people going on the Mars trip, it will certainly, some way, by some way, shape and form, ship you a prize out there, as long as you're doing me a channel shout out from Mars. How about that for a trade? Anyway, cheers, Manta. Moving on to a question from g.ambulance.service. Love that you provide frequent and interesting chat about 30k. You're welcome, mate. If you could commission Forgeworld to produce a single infantry or character model, what would it be? Now, that's a really good question. I like that. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to give two things I'd really like. The first would be the Iron Hands Shattered Legion character Shadrach Medusan, just because he's such a dude. I'm an Iron Hands player, so yeah, I'd love to see a model of Shadrach Medusan. And I think there's a lot of people in the community who would like to see that model, and I think it would sell really well. So I don't know why they've not even bothered to do it. That's one. The other thing I'd really like to see, and this is a little bit evil, is I'd like to see, or the other thing I'd commission Forge to do, would be a miniature of the Caban machine. So the Caban machine is a, AI construct that features in the novel Mechanicum, I think by Graham McNeil, and it is a it's, it's a great um, yeah it's a cool like, can you call it a character an AI character? Well, it certainly makes quite a big impression on the story. Shadrach Medusan or the Caban Machine. The next question comes from Oliver Falkasater. I think I've got that right. I hope I've got that pronounced right. Have you played any Warhammer roleplay games? Uh, Edu Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, Dark Heresy, Rogue, Rogue Trader, etc. And if so, what do you think of them and which is your favourite? Well, yes I have actually. I've played a lot of RPGs over the years. And a few Warhammer ones. I've played a little bit of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, although it was only a little bit and it was a long time ago and I don't recall it particularly well. However, um, I have played quite a bit more Dark Heresy, both in the form of the core Dark Heresy and the Death Watch variants, so where you get to play Space Marines. Um, I really like those roleplay games, and I think they're very well written. Uh, the game mechanics work really well, and I mean, it, yeah, and it's kind of like one of those things. I mean, I don't, I don't write adventures, but I've got a couple of mates who write some absolutely brilliant adventures, and yeah, the the those. RPG systems really just like make the universe come to life. So yeah, I, I really like them. They're great systems. Um, which do I like the most? Well, if you play the Death Watch game, you actually get to play a Space Marine depicted in the superhuman stats that the fiction does. They Space Marines in the Death Watch roleplay are absolutely brick hard. You know, you you don't tend to fight individual enemy opponents, you'll fight a whole gang, a whole like, swarm of, say, orcs or humans or equivalent. That's how good the marines are, and it, it feels consistent with the fluff. Um, however, I actually prefer just the Dark Heresy game, particularly playing as Imperial Inquisition agents, so agents of the throne, um, because it adds a, an element of danger in that you don't get when you're a space marine. When you're a space marine, you're an, you're an absolute combat monster. But when you're kind of like a lowly agent of the throne and you've got maybe a las pistol and you're up against some sort of horrific warp entity or cultist, then it, it, that works really well. So probably Dark Heresy as Inquisition agents is uh, my favorite. Thank you for that question, Oliver. The, next, the penultimate question is from Nikolai... Bousset, I think. Nicolas Bousset? Fantastic channel. Thank you very much. Um, I love this comment, uh, Nicholas. Um, 
you're truly the venerable dreadnought of 40k players. Well, that's the most flattering way someone's ever told me I'm old before. Um, <laughs> um, your Retro Hammer series sucked me in, and having a perspective from someone who's played from the start and giving colour on what it's like to play the first editions, complete with the original models painted in the 80s style, is nothing short of amazing to see. Please keep it up and especially do more Retro Hammer. Well, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> That's a great. Uh, that's a great comment, Venerable Dreadnought. I, I think, yeah, I, I, yeah, Venerable Dreadnought. Does that mean you can kind of lock me away when you don't need me and you just get me out for special events? Hmm. Anyway, yeah, I've got more ideas for Retro Hammer. The next, what's the next Retro Hammer I'm going to do? The next Retro Hammer I'll probably do will be actually a miniatures review of the remains of my Slaves to Darkness era World Eater Chaos Marine Force. So yes, yeah, I'm really old school models in there and uh, old school paint jobs as well. So that hope that's one to watch out for. Yeah. So anyway, but thank you very much for that, Nicholas. And our final question is from Tom Cush, and Tom asks, "Have you considered trying to design a model yourself? I've seen guys make incredible digital models designed for transfer to CAD or 3D printer." What would you design and for what army, i.e. your opinion, is there anything currently lacking in, in the, in, I guess in the armies, a particular choice slot that could be improved or replaced? Have I ever thought about making a model? Um, not really, I spend a lot of time making other people's models. Um, sculpting, well I mean, hmm. I guess I could see myself perhaps making, having a go at making a tank or equivalent vehicle. Not sure about sculpting models, that's more uh, my brother-in-law's forte who does his own miniature company. What would I do? Here's a funny little one. Um, back in the compendium day, so going way back to the start of 40k, um, someone did a scratch build kit using a plastic zoid toy called a groundhog. Maybe it'd be funny to remake the groundhog uh, for 30k, that would be quite amusing. That funny little bit burrowing vehicle, bring it back into maybe I don't know where could you put the groundhog. You could probably you could probably put it in the Legion list, you could put it in the militia list. That would be a nice little nod back to the early days of 40k. And I guess the other one would be to make the Jocasta Grav Attack. So the good old fashioned deodorant bottle uh, land skimmer would be another one to do. Anyway, and that brings me to the end of the 1,000 subscriber video Q&A. So I hope you've um, I hope you find those answers interesting and perhaps a little bit amusing at times. Just finish up by thanking you all again for all your support and encouragement and uh, the time that you put into watching the channel. I really do appreciate that. Things are going really well with subscribers at the moment. I'm nearly up to 1,500 now, so that I'm sure I will stage another event at some uh, milestone in the not too distant future at this rate keep an eye out for that but yeah thank you all ever so much again i will speak to you next time and goodbye